potentially be in late. You would think it was late, yeah. Uh, for now, it's just all coming in. It's late. 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 Jason and Andy uh, in a special way. You need to shake the heck out of it. And then with this pipette, is Dr. Bird talking about how to use these? No? Okay. So, how much salt is left? Yeah, is it supposed to be solid like that? Yeah. Now, do you shook up the Keylex? Yeah. Okay. It's all right. Shake it again just to make sure it's going to shake. Shake that. A micro centrifuge tube with your name on it, and then we're going to be all at the same spot. <laughs> if you go to the medical sciences, they will tell you never, 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 never recap any We're not the medical sciences. I'm just trying to do it. Make sure you leave the key like alone, right? Yeah, I think we got it. These two are mine? Yep, yeah. just put them into one and then do the same thing again. So I have a master mix, that's our technical term, of all of those chemicals mixed together in a solution that I'm going to inject, in, inject into each of your reactions. And I have a special pipette that does that because it's a repeat pipette. It ejects the same amount of volume into each of And you're not allowed to touch it because it's locked. So I'm loading up um, that mixture. And this allows me to fill 40 micro or 45, no, 47 and a half microliters into each of these tubes really, really fast. So, one, two, three, four. It's not fast. Go fast. All right. Go away. 96 reactions. Uh, and when we're running that many reactions, we actually have a plate of, of, of uh, wells rather than individual tubes. Because you can imagine having 96 of these little tiny tubes would be a real pain. So we're going to shove those all in there. Uh, I'm going to cover them up with a, what's called a hot top. So the lid is going to heat up to 95 degrees as well. So the, wa the water isn't tempted to boil off or evaporate the top. Of the it's lid. a little hotter on the top, isn't it? What's up? A little hotter on the top, it's too. Hotter, it's slightly hotter. Yeah, so it pushes push, it down. Yeah, to keep the water down. Um, and I don't know if everybody can see the little screen, but it actually, these modern PCR machines are really cute because they give you a little graph of what the temperatures are going to be at each cycle. So the first cycle is 94 degrees. We're going to the nature of the DNA cause the two strands to separate. The next cycle is a lower temperature to allow the primers to anneal to your template DNA, and then 72 degrees to polymerize that DNA, and then we're going to repeat. So we go back and melt again. And so you can see right on the chart, it says, how many times are we going to repeat it? We're going to go 30 times. So 30 cycles around, so each time it doubles, theoretically. So if we, you know, the, the penny story, did you ever hear that? If I paid you a penny today, I gave you two pennies tomorrow, and four pennies tomorrow, would, would that be a good job? Yeah. Oh yeah, you bet, because by the end of the month, by 30 cycles, you'd have a million dollars. Does that make sense? A, so billion, gonna, a billion. Well, or a billion dollars, sorry, yeah. Okay, so I'm actually going to run this sucker now, uh, if I remember how to press the button. Um, <laughs> see, change. yes, start, okay. Those tubes aren't going to melt? Those tubes no. are not going to melt. We no. buy them that way, we don't want them to melt. <laughs> yeah. So, and what are you guys going to be doing while everybody's loading? You're, we're going to look at the SEM and look at some stuff at a really big scale. Okay, so I'll do a quick demo on how to uh, load your gel for everybody. Uh, there. There. <laughs> so using electrons, we're not using 
Oh, you just got to hand the stabilize it. It's really hard, and then just straight out. There you go. That's it. Well, there's not, there's not a drop of blue in the end of that tip, so that was good. you guys were here when we ran these again because if we look at the samples one they're very very clear everybody's reactions work perfectly so I take back what I said about the non swishers you all swished perfectly or well enough and now you'll notice that some of these lanes there's only one band like this one right here in the middle where my finger is just one uh, band of DNA and some have two bands like these guys and these guys and these guys so these folks I know something about you now you're a heterozygote because there's two different products one from each chromosome number one and this guy right here in the middle well you're a homozygote and that means both of your chromosome one um, homologs in this region of the chromosome it's the same sequence of DNA are near to the same sequence. And so that, that big smear at the top is just uh, Just non-specific yeah. product. Yeah. Um, and so now that doesn't mean that your mom and dad were brother and sister identical twins. It just means that they're, they happen to have that same region or that same allele. And so the allele frequencies are something that population biologists look at. Uh, in, in fact, this allele that we see most commonly in all of the samples uh, is one allele which is most often found in North America. It's also found very commonly in Europe and, and may have some, although there isn't a lot of stats for it, might have some association with that particular ethnic group or population. 